Divine Truth Frequently Asked Question Session. Jesus, Mary and others provide answers to questions that are frequently asked by members of the media and public. This presentation is part of the Jesus and Mary's Finances series. Mary asked Jesus to answer specific questions about the company Divine Truth and Jesus and Mary's personal financial situation. The session was recorded on the 18th of November 2012 in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. This is session one. What is the Divine Truth Organisation? Well, the Divine Truth Organisation is an organisation that I set up myself years ago um, that I primarily set up for the purpose of just storing information in a place where that, that is copyrighted to myself or that I produce or that uh, is like a great big container of information of everything that myself and Mary, once Mary joined me, do. So everything that we produce, um, you know, videos, audios, any typewritten documents we produce, basically are all stored in the container of the Divine Truth Organization. The Divine Truth Organization is also Mary and my vehicle, if you like, for distributing Divine Truth to the world. It's uh, directly under the control of myself, so I am the only director. I'm the only shareholder because I was the person who set it up many, many years before I met Mary. And the Divine Truth organization is very, very simple. It's, it's just Mary and myself are employees of the organization. And all of the things that are donated to us that we buy or, or distribute come from the organization. So all the DVDs we give away come from the organization. All the hard disks we give away come from the organization all the edited material that is produced or is stored in the organization. And the main purpose for the organization is that myself and Mary have control of the information so that the information isn't lost. So that's the primary concern we have. We don't want the information to be lost to the world. So we want, and we don't want the information to be, to be manipulated. And so we want to have a organization that stores all of this information that is, um, the, everything about what Mary and I have produced. How is Divine Truth Organisation structured? Well, the Divine Truth Organisation is a proprietary limited company uh, set up in a, under Australian law. Um, it is our, a, a company that has one shareholder and one director, myself in both cases, and its primary purpose is, uh, as I've said in previous questions, its primary purpose is to hold the information that we produce and distribute this information to the world. That's the primary purpose of the organisation. So, for example, we receive donations from people all over the world and we then use those donations to deliver divine truth to the world. And, you know, we have high costs of travel, as you can imagine. We also have high costs of sound equipment and video editing equipment and DVDs and DVD production and, and YouTube, YouTube production and so forth. And all of these costs are paid for out of the organisation. And then whatever is left over generally comes to myself and Mary uh, for our personal living expenses. Who are the directors of Divine Truth Organisation? The Divine Truth Organisation is set up as a single director company and I am the only director of the Divine Truth Organisation. Who are the shareholders of Divine Truth Organisation? The Divine Truth Organisation is set up as a single shareholder company and I am the only shareholder of the Divine Truth Organisation. The reason why I'm the only one is because uh, I set up this organisation before I met Mary and we haven't got around to <laughs> changing the directorship or the uh, shareholder of the organisation uh, just because we haven't got around to doing it. Um, and there's really no need for us to get around doing it, um, except for me putting in my will that Mary can be appointed if, if something happens to me. So, um, yeah, the, the main thing is the organisation is, is there for the storage of material and the storage of any assets that have been accumulated in, distribu in distribu distributing the material. So the main purpose of the organisation, as I said, is to distribute the material that Mary and I produce. Does the Divine Truth Organisation own property? 
No, the Divine Truth Organization does not own any land or property. It, uh, it, it, it does own some assets, however. So it owns an asset of the van that we use, that we store all of the uh, equipment that we travel with. It owns all of the equipment that we travel with, so all of the sound equipment and the video recording equipment. It owns quite a lot of uh, video editing equipment, computers. Some of this equipment uh, is with Lena and Igor who are doing our editing, but, but it's all owned by the Divine Truth Company. And so the Divine Truth Company owns quite a lot of assets that are all about trying to get more Divine Truth distributed to the world. Um, as to how many assets it owns now, I haven't actually totaled it up, but I'm sure it's in the account somewhere. But um, we continually buy, of course, new assets depending on what we need to help us uh, distribute Divine Truth of the world in a, in a more rapid manner or in a more economical manner. How does Divine Truth Organisation earn its income? Oh, well, I, I wouldn't call it earning its income. <laughs> um, what we do, Mary and I, is we, we give to people and, and in the process of giving to people our time, oftentimes people want to help us give our time to people by helping us financially and helping the Divine Truth Organisation financially to do that. So, so what happens is that during the process of giving to people, we often receive funds from people. Now, most of the funds are received uh, as we, we will go through the account separately, perhaps, but we receive, for example, seminar income. We receive income from seminars. Again, I wouldn't call it income. We have a donation box up the back of the seminar and we give the seminar and sometimes there's a hundred, a uh, couple of hundred people sometimes present and we, we don't ask for a donation, but there's a donation box. We do let people know there's a donation box up the back of the hall if they want to donate. And people give freely, generally. And so we receive donations that we then, we then um, like bank that as income. And, uh, and that's called seminar income. Um, we also receive uh, internet donations. Um, so Internet donations are donations that are given to us by people all around the world and they send usually these donations through on PayPal and these donations come in uh, fairly regularly for, from some people and, uh, and so we receive what you would call internet donations or internet income. If you look at last year's financial statement, internet donations amounted to $16,422 and seminar donations amounted to $55,453. So um, they are the kinds of income that we receive. We also receive significant donations. And in fact, most of our donations, around uh, one to two, two usually around two thirds of our donations come from very few people uh, where people have given us significant donations. So for example, last year, we received good significant donations from people uh, from eight different families of $135,000 and that enabled us to do quite a lot of things, purchase new material that we needed and so forth, and to distribute quite a lot of truth as a result. Um, so by far the majority of our funds comes from a very small portion of people um, who have donated some uh, fairly large funds to us. And, uh, and then the rest of the donations usually is spread between coming from internet donations or seminar donations, or sometimes people donate to us direct to our bank account and we receive some donations in that manner as well. Do you solicit income or donations from others? No, we don't solicit it. We don't sort of advertise or market ourselves. However, we do say quite clearly, if a person wants to donate to us, we give them a mechanism to donate to us so that we have a way of continually supplying what we do for free. We obviously need people at some point to donate to us, otherwise myself and Mary would have to go back to our old jobs. My old job was a computer systems engineer and Mary's old job was a occupational therapist. And so we have the ability to earn uh, enough money for our life uh, using those old jobs if we wanted to, but uh, we'd prefer to keep doing what we do full time, uh, distributing divine truth. And so we are very dependent upon people donating to us freely and, and also donating to us regularly. 
we find that most people donate once or twice without thinking that we still need to live uh, on a day to day basis. So, you know, we really do appreciate even if it's a small donation, regular small donations is a, is a great way for us to continue to keep doing what we're doing. We don't solicit it because we feel that people should not be pressured into doing it. However, when under the terms of both companies, both the God's Way of Love, uh, which we don't receive income from, and also the Divine Truth, which we do receive income from, um, we, we, we need to run both uh, companies in the blue. In other words, we're not allowed to, um, under the terms of their constitutions, we're not allowed to uh, run them at a debt. And for this reason, we can't do things that we would like to do, but we don't have enough funds to do. So we are limited by the amount of funds that we have uh, to a degree in terms of what we can achieve. And as a result of that, um, you know, there are limitations placed because of the lack of funds sometimes. So there is a limitation placed on what we can achieve. With regard to how we disperse our funds, I'm willing to go through the accounts of how we disperse our funds in another question. And so please look for a question on the site regarding how Divine Truth dispersed its funds during the last financial year. Why don't you charge for seminars or groups? Well, there are many reasons why we do not charge for seminars or groups. All Mary and I really do is we are really just seminar presenters in a way. We also provide advice to groups of people and we do that usually in a group, like in some kind of seminar format. We also provide project advice to many of the God's Way of Love uh, learning centres, uh, which we also do for free. So we, we do all of those things for free, free of charge. The reason why we've decided to do it free of charge is because we feel quite strongly that if people appreciate what we do, then we'll have enough funds to live. If they don't appreciate what we do, um, then we won't have enough funds to live and we'll just go back to our old jobs. <laughs> we feel quite strongly that it should support itself if the world wants it. And this is one of the primary reasons why we feel strongly that we should not solicit funds or determine a price to come to one of our seminars. So a normal seminar pre presenter would say, you know, charge a few hundred dollars to come to a day's presentation. I know I've paid for quite a few in my life where I've paid for somebody to do a seminar and it's been quite a few hundred dollars. And in some cases I've been to some seminars that have cost quite a few thousand dollars. Um, and we've decided not to do that. And the primary reason why we've decided not to do that is because we believe very strongly that divine truth should be available for free and it should be available to the whole world, not just to people who can pay for it. What we hope to do is that the people who can afford to give us some funds finish up funding the things that we give to other people who cannot afford to give us any funds. And when I say people who cannot afford, I feel most people in the Western world can generally afford something. Whereas uh, we're, what we're starting to have happen now is that we're giving away quite a lot of things to other countries who are not part of the Western world, so-called Western world, people who have no funds whatsoever. And so what we do there is we buy disk drives for them or we buy DVDs, depending on what they can, whether they have any machinery. We'll even buy the machinery for them to watch the DVD if they don't have it or give them enough funds to buy a computer <laughs> or buy a computer for them or, or buy a, a TV for them so that they can watch the DVDs even. And as long as they have it in English or at the moment in English and Portuguese, which are the two languages that are currently translated into generally. And we hope that in time that will change as well with the, with the efforts of individuals. We hope to be able to give a, a lot of this material away for free to people in the third world uh, because we feel that they are just as deserving as any person in the Western world of all this material. But, but it does require that the people who have more funds available to them in their day-to-day day -day life support that in some way if we're going to be able to do that. We've found we've been able to do that quite, quite a lot recently. But uh, again, if we run, when, once we run out of funds, which we do on fairly occasion, you know, fairly regular basis lately, <laughs> um, 
then of course we can't really do much more and we just wait until the more funds come along. And that's how we run our life pretty much. Mm. You've mentioned in a previous seminar that you have in the past used a credit card to purchase a car. Can you explain your feelings on the ethics of using credit? Well, whenever you enter the process of using credit, you have to understand the, the principles about credit. And it would be unloving to expect to have credit from somebody without wanting to repay the debt. So we have a great focus ourselves, myself and Mary, on firstly repaying any debt that we have and making sure that we do not incur debts that we cannot pay. So when we had some regular seminar income coming in, we decided to, that we needed a new vehicle. At the time, we had a very old vehicle that was breaking down all the time on our way home. We were traveling for three hours and uh, at a time in, in Australia, in the Australian bush. And quite often we'd find ourselves stranded in the middle of nowhere, um, having to get towed somewhere. And so we decided that because there was a regular seminar income and we felt quite strongly that we'd be able to repay the debt, we incurred the debt of getting a newer vehicle on, uh, on a credit card so that we could uh, get to the seminars more easily and also get home more comfortably than having to break it down on a regular basis in the middle of nowhere. So that's the reason why we did it. We would never encourage anybody to incur a debt that they knew they could not repay or that they felt at some point in the future they would like to not repay. We feel that every person who incurs any debt should have a desire to repay the debt. And, uh, and we also need to understand that under t today's terms of lending, that most terms of lending involve interest. And if we do incur a debt that involves that term of interest, then we, should, we are, are also making a contract with the lender that we are going to repay that interest. And that's a part of the contract we are currently making. Myself and Mary only make those particular contracts when we believe we have the capacity to repay the debt. If we do not believe we have the capacity to repay, repay the debt, then we do not purchase the, the material or the equipment or you know, the vehicle or, or whatever asset it is that we feel we need. We just wait. And uh, we've often waited quite some significant periods of time before we've believed we've had the ability to repay a certain debt. And what I mean by that is that we, ha we often have had something that we've needed to purchase. For example, when we first began doing seminars, we felt we needed to purchase a really, really good sound system. But we only had $2,300 in our bank account, and that would only buy a $2,100 sound system that we found that was a complete unit. And so we went out and purchased that particular sound system. And even though we knew at a later time we would need bigger sound systems, and at a later time that particular sound system probably would not be used, we still went out and purchased it because it was the only thing we could afford at, the, at that particular time. So myself and Mary are not in the state of incurring debts that we cannot afford or that we feel are beyond our capacity at the time to pay. Now, as it turned out later, we, many years later, about a year and a half later, after using that sound system that was in, traveling in the back of the little tiny car I mentioned earlier that was breaking down all the time, um, we found that uh, we had a, a, a very generous person donate to us $10,000 and we could then go out and buy a very good sound system, which we still uh, are running with today, which has been added to since, of course, but we only purchase things based on what is donated to us and, and therefore we have a long list generally of all the things that we would like to get in terms of that would help us to distribute divine truth to the world, but, uh, but we don't incur the debts of those particular things or incur the expense of those particular things until we have the funds to repay those particular debts or expenses. Does Divine Truth Organisation have any employees? Yes, the Divine Truth Organisation has two employees. The employees are myself and Mary. They are the only employees of the Divine Truth Organisation and we probably will never have any more employees than two employees. We feel that uh, there are times when we'd love to be able to contract other people uh, to help us get things done. But at this point in time, our donations are not significant enough for us to pay regular contract fees to people. And so a lot of people who help us to distribute divine truth 
help us through the generosity of their own heart. They volunteer their time to us and volunteer their effort to us. And the people who are doing that full time, we've actually placed their contact details on our website so that you can see the people who are volunteering their time, either full time or at least more than half of their time, and uh, at least more than 20 hours a week, in other words. And, and that way, each individual has the advantage to donate to them specifically. Bear in mind that when you donate to them specifically, myself and Mary do not receive the funds. Those people are receiving the funds. Also bear in mind that sometimes you donate to people, you may donate to people specifically uh, who have listed there without consideration of who actually produced the material. For example, if you donate to the person who's copying a disc for you, um, that person has very little time involved of their time copying the disc for you. Myself and Mary and Lena and Igor Shakanov, who do all of the video editing for us, they have a huge amount of time involved in the production of that particular material. And the person who's doing the copying has the least amount of time involved in it. And oftentimes the person doing the copying gets the donation and the other people are forgotten. And, uh, and so my suggestion is for anybody looking at those particular issues, is to ask themselves where the effort actually is when they actually give their donations. We would love to uh, be able to donate more money to people who are assisting us, and we do donate funds to people who are assisting us. But unfortunately, you know, that we have to also be considerate of how much funds we have to live and also how much funds uh, we have to distribute Divine Truth to the world. So it's like a balancing act. How does Divine Truth organisation disperse its funds? Well, um, perhaps the best way to answer that is, is to answer how it disperses its funds in the last financial year. Um, and that's probably the best way to answer that question. So probably what I would like to do here is go through the accounts for the last financial year so you get an idea of how it dif disperses its funds. In the previous financial year, this was the year that ended 2011, we had a loss, so we spent too much money and that was something that we needed to address. We had a loss in the Divine Truth organisation of $52,000. In other words, we spent more money dispersing things than we spent getting in. So this year we had a total income of $209,260 coming into the Divine Truth organisation. That was made up from interest and rebates, which are very minor. We had significant donations from eight families of $135,000. We had seminar donations of $55,000 and we had internet donations of $16,000. So the $209,260 were made up of those particular donations. And then we uh, dispersed those funds. How we disperse those funds is as follows. Myself and Mary had a personal income uh, taken out of the funds. So, and this is what we live on. So my personal income, my tax inclusive income is $11,000 for the year. Now, if you put that in context, the average Australian income is $69,000 a year. So I actually earn uh, or disperse to myself less than the average Australian income by a factor of seven almost, <laughs> or six at least. And actually my income is less than if I was on unemployment benefits in Australia. Um, now Mary's personal income was $5,000. So hers is less than half of what she would get coming in if she was on unemployment benefits. Myself and Mary don't believe that we should be on unemployment benefits. The reason why is because we feel quite strongly that if this divine truth, this effort to distribute divine truth to the world cannot support itself through donations, then we need to just go out and work and not do it anymore. And we just live our life by it. Um, and it obviously means that the people in the world are not ready for it just yet. In addition to those personal incomes, uh, myself and Mary's personal superannuation was $1,536. So our total, myself and Mary's total disbursements from that income was $17,536. 
Then we paid uh, Lena and Igor Shakhanov some for editing the DVDs, YouTube, and a lot of other things they do. We wish we could pay them far more than we'd paid them uh, during the year, but uh, we paid them $10,500. So they basically um, received the same amount, just a bit under the same amount as I personally received from the donations. Then we had traveling expenses of 35 or nearly $36,000. We had uh, computers and software of around eight and a half thousand dollars. We had DVD production of nearly twelve thousand dollars. We had motor vehicle expenses of ten thousand dollars. We had sound equipment maintenance expenses of about eleven and a half thousand dollars. And then we had sound, video, and computer equipment purchases of forty six thousand nine hundred dollars. And then we had some other miscellaneous expenses about five thousand dollars of. Now that all adds up to one hundred and fifty seven thousand four hundred twenty eight dollars of expenses which gave us a profit this year of $51,832, which paid for our accumulated loss last year of $52,274. So we ended up with our accumulated profit and loss of $442. So now this year, we're happy with this year because we've broken, at least come close to breaking even. The problem in Australia is that if you have a, a, a loss every year for three years, you have to actually close down the company. So, so we are very happy that we've had a loss, uh, a profit this coming year rather than a loss as we did last year, um, so that we can keep the company, Divine Truth Company, open and running. <laughs> um, as you can see from our expenses, um, myself and Mary receive very little of the money that is donated. Um, of course, it would be handy if we receive some more, um, but we live quite comfortably, we feel. We would love, though, to be able to give more money to the people who help us voluntarily. And at the moment, um, because of the amount of expenses that we have uh, and the amount of income coming in, that's very, very difficult to do. The, the truth is also that last year we received on the average around, uh, 40, about around $50,000 a quarter in terms of uh, you know, every three month period, which we managed to finish up purchasing a lot of material and goods that we needed to get things done. And um, this year we need to purchase less of that, but, but we haven't been giving people like what we would love to donate to people who are assisting us to get things done. And, and in addition, uh, obviously we live very, very tight as well, generally. So, so um, what we're finding this year, though, that our, our, our income has, is one third of what it was last year. So at the moment, we are receiving what we received in a quarter last year. It's looking like we may receive in three quarters this year. So we're, we're looking at having to probably scale down a lot of the things that we do this year as a result of the donations being much tighter this year than last year. What was your personal income for the financial year 2011 to 2012? Well, we've just uh, completed our personal income returns, myself and Mary, and so my personal income return, which, which we'll place on the internet as well for everyone to see, uh, I had a gross salary and wage income of $11,000 this year, and I had interest and dividends of $558, so my total taxable income this year was $11,558. And uh, normally I would have to pay $833.70 in tax, but at the moment under Australian law, there's a low income offset that I get of $1,500 from that. So I, don't, I didn't have to pay any tax personally this year uh, because, of the, because my income was only $11,558. Cool. So that, that document uh, will be placed on the on on this in this question so you can see that for yourself. Why is your personal income fairly low? <laughs> well, and um, there's a number of reasons probably. Myself and Mary are not interested in living like a high life. We're just having we 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 feel quite comfortable. We we only find that we need around uh, 15 to 20,000 dollars a year to live. And so the rest of the money that we receive goes straight back into distributing more divine truth to the world. And also we're quite mindful that we've got a lot of people who are helping us. So, so sometimes we'd love to be able to give to those people who are helping us, 
rather than um, you know take all the money that we, we could have for ourselves. So we could have chosen to keep ten more thousand dollars perhaps and not give that to Lena and Eagle, but then Lena and Eagle would not be able to do what they did for us last year either. And in fact, they're really quite struggling to do what they're doing for us and they're going to have to come up with some alternative probably if they don't receive more funds themselves. And so, you know, if if we receive more funds, there's certain areas we'd like it to go to uh, other than to ourselves when we feel quite comfortable the way we're current, currently living. So our particular focus is not on receiving personal income, but rather focusing on getting as much money available to us to distribute this divine truth of the world. So, so this is what we're very, very interested in getting as much of the material out there as we possibly can. We've now got pretty much most of the equipment we need with the exception of a few things. Now, I always finish up saying that and then we always finish up needing different types of equipment. But and, and Igor reminds me of that quite frequently. But um, a lot of the times at the moment, what we're missing is, is skilled people uh, and the ability to, to pay skilled people. So, for example, you know, Lena and Igor have had, or particularly Igor has had now three or four years experience doing DVD production. He helps us all with the light, and, and Lena and Igor help us both with lighting, camera, right, as they're doing now during these interviews and during these question and answer series. They help us with a lot of different areas, uh, but we don't have enough money to pay them for all the things that they do. We would love to have enough money to pay them, or we'd love to see them get enough donations of their own from people who are appreciative of the work that they do. In addition, um, I do a lot of work uh, that you know takes up my time. For example, I store uh, 40 terabytes, I look after the storage and maintenance of 40 terabytes of data. Um, I, I edit the websites, uh, so I put all the new da data on the websites. I tag all of the YouTube presentations so that it can, they're searchable. And all of that takes my time. And I'm quite happy to do all of those things, but it would be good if someone who knew what they were doing uh, and who'd had a desire to do it could be asked to do it. If we had the funds to help pay for that, then, then that would be one less thing I'd have to do. So at the moment, both Mary and myself are doing things that, that um, if we had the funds, we would probably pay somebody else to do so that we could have more time. So we're not interested in having more funds. We're, myself and Mary, are more interested in having more time available so that we can share our time more with people. But at the moment, that's quite difficult when we also have a lot of these other competing time-taking activities that we can't really pay somebody else to do. So when you're managing websites and managing channels, YouTube channels and things like that, you know, and also managing the other things that we manage uh, as well, um, it is you know, you've got to be quite careful how you use your time. For this reason, um, you know, we can't give a lot of personal assistance to people because we just don't have the personal time available to do that. And also we feel it's not the best way to use our time because we feel the best way to use our time is to give, when we are giving our time, give our time to as many people as possible at the same time, rather than just give our time to one person and then have to repeat that with every single person we meet. Obviously, if we help people individually, then it's using a lot of our time. If we help people collectively, it uses much less of our time in the sense of an economical use of our time. So, so Mary and myself are into leveraging our time. That's what we're attempting to do. And so we will use funds that we get donated to leverage our time. And if that means paying somebody for a service so that we can get something done that we feel is needed to be done, then we will pay them for that particular service if we have the funds available. If the funds are not available, then we do it ourselves. And that's why for the first three or four years of me doing presentations, um, I did most of the sound myself. You know, I stuck a camera in the middle of nowhere and did that, you know, or people did it with home videos. And this is the reason why the earlier material is poor quality because, you know, there was one person doing all of those particular things. Now that we have people helping us, it's great. But unfortunately, uh, I don't know how long that can continue because, because we, you know, they also need to live. They also have expenses. And at the moment, they're volunteering quite large amounts of their time. 
without having, um, you know, without actually having a large amount of funds coming in. And, uh, and that then means that it's very, very difficult for them to survive as well. And um, many of them too uh, survive on a similar amount of funds as myself and Mary. And so, you know, obviously, you know, they, they are not extravagant people who have extravagant things, but we do get things that are necessary for the distribution of truth. So that's why we'd rather go out and buy a van, for example, or we put a van on, we, we're leasing a van is probably a better thing because that's what we actually are doing. We decided to go lease a van and pay a monthly fee for leasing a van than spending more money on ourselves or something like that because we feel that was important. We had too much equipment to carry around in any vehicle that we had and it was costing too much time and money of everybody's effort volunteered to, con to have that continue. So the way we feel about our income is that we only need probably, you know, in the vicinity of around $20,000 uh, for us to live uh, very, very happily. And the rest of the funds that we donate, uh, that get donated to us, we want to utilise in leveraging our time so that we have more time available. The more time we have available, the more truth we can deliver, the more truth we can record, the more presentations we can give, the, you know, the, the, the more interactions we can have, and the more we are smarter about those interactions and have collective interactions with people, the more people benefit from those particular interactions. So, so now it's even more unlikely that we have individual interviews unless it's recorded and it's going to be placed on YouTube so that lots of people benefit, for example. That's our focus. Our focus is leveraging our time. What property do you personally own? I own a 40 acre property uh, that I purchased before I met Mary and before I began doing Divine Truth seminars. Um, this property um, is in Queensland, in, in near the area of Kingaroy in Queensland, Australia. And um, when I bought it, it was $185,000. I don't know what it would be worth now. It has a two bedroom home on it and a couple of sheds and a couple of tents. And, uh, and that's the property in which myself and Mary live, and it's the only property that we actually own. What assets do you personally own? My only personal asset is a vehicle, a four-wheel drive vehicle, that myself and Mary use on the property. All of the other assets that we have uh, are all owned by the Divine Truth Company. So the Divine Truth Company owns two vehicles, and it also owns all of our sound equipment and all our video equipment. It also owns a lot of the equipment that we have for our office here um, and all of our furniture, everything that you occasionally might see in other videos, the furniture that's here, the computers that are here, all of those, all of that equipment is all owned by the Divine Truth Company.